It is my privilege to request our chief guest, Dr. Abe Bang, to kindly deliver his convocation address. Dr. V. M. Katoj, President of Jipmer, Professor Rakesh Agarwal, Director of this Institute, and who provided excellent leadership during the critical COVID period. And even in today, today's program, the meticulous way it was planned and conducted, I could see the glimpses of his leadership. <laughs> Dr. Kundra, Mr. Selva Ganpati, Srimati Sudha Sheshashai, and the faculty present and the past directors, the students, postgraduates, graduates, PhDs, everybody who received the degree today. I wish to extend a huge congratulations to you all. Today. Congratulations, natural. Why huge? Because you have received something very special. When I joined my internship in 1973 and opened Harrison's new edition at that time, the first sentence in the introduction was, no greater opportunity as well as responsibility can befall on a human being than to be a physician. You are joining that profession with its huge responsibility, and we experienced that during the COVID epidemic. Many of you, faculty, postgraduates, have put their life at stake to save the patients. This is it. This is the call of this profession. You are joining that profession. Second, because you have received your training, your education in this institution, which is so special, Jip Mayer. And I'm told it is completing 200 years next year. So you are trained in a very special national institution with 199 years legacy, with very high quality, with very high quality of teaching, of research, of administration, faculty, and peer colleagues. So you had had a very special education in a special institution. You received a lot of knowledge. You practiced skills, mastered your skills. You acquired some attitudes. And now you have a license to either make people live or die. Tomorrow, when you will step out of this place with your degree in your hand, my first question to you is, what will you do with that degree? What will you do with the knowledge and skills and the special professional expertise that you have received here, what will you do with that? You practically have a blank check in your hand. And the check on which you will write your destiny, you will write your future. When you go out, there is a human market for doctors. That market will ask you, what is your price? It will offer you a price. I'll urge you not to write a price on your blank check. Your life is too invaluable. You have only one life. There is no ones more here. Whatever price you write on your life, 
it's a deal with a loss because in exchange you will be giving your invaluable life so don't sell your life life is too important to be sold write something else on that blank check ask yourself the second question i have now knowledge i have now skills i have a professional license and degree what is the purpose of my life several years ago i was at the harvard university and before giving my address i talked with nearly 100 students medical and public health mds mph phds same thing happened next year at the johns hopkins now these two institutions practically cream of the world in the field of medicine and public health but most of the individuals these doctors masters and phd's and md's when i asked them what will you do after coming out of this institution most of them said we don't know maybe our professor will give us some lecture job maybe some international organization will give us some project maybe we will get job somewhere in government what i realized that training institutions even the best of the universities can give you knowledge and skill but they cannot give you the purpose the purpose you have to find for yourself it is your prerogative it is your responsibility as to what for you will spend your life so think about what will you write on that blank check of your life not a price but a value and what value value will you create through your life and if you want to serve a purpose where will you find that purpose they are not sold in the market they are not available in the malls they are not available on amazon you can't buy a purpose you have to discover it for yourself you have to choose it for yourself nearly 60 70 years ago my father who was a gold medalist of his period and professor of economics he was a freedom fighter he he was being sent by new government of india to the us for studying economics further a week before his scheduled departure to the us for his phd in economics he went to meet mahatma gandhi now those of you who have seen the photograph and bapu kuti a hut like any farmer lives in gandhi ji was sitting on a bamboo mat and writing something my father went in bowed to him he asked him how did you come to professor bang and so my father said bapu i am going to the us for studying economics further i came to seek your blessings the old man looked at my father for a few seconds and then uttered only one sentence he said it in hindi so let me first say in hindi arthashastra seekhna hai to america ke bajaye bharat ke dehaton mein jao those who may not understand hindi if you want to study economics further instead of the us go to the villages of india my father was 28 year old at that time came out outside the bapukuti there itself he tore away his admission papers and travel documents and within one month he started living in a village in vardha district to live in a village and live like a farmer to learn the economics of rural india several decades later when rani and i returned from the us with our public health some knowledge these words were still ringing in our ears go to the villages of india and that's how we reached gadchiroli gadchiroli is a tribal district the remotest the poorest least developed a kala pani of maharashtra hardly government servants doctors are not very keen to go there 
we thought that if you want to serve the people of india and rural india better go where you are most needed and that's why we chose gadchuli in 1986 i am sharing with you very few glimpses when we had to design a hospital for tribal people we invited people from nearly 50 villages and asked them what sort of hospital do you want they said we are afraid of big buildings so it should not be of building big buildings we are afraid of white cloth in which these doctors and nurses wrap themselves why are you afraid apron why are you afraid they said we we wrap dead bodies in white shroud if they are already in white cloth how will they save our lives and then they finally said doctor there is a secret there is no god in these hospitals if there is no god how can anybody save us so we don't go to hospital so we designed with them a hospital for tribals tribal friendly hospital which was hospital of huts this was nearly 30 years ago over the period this hospital has served nearly 1500 villages in that district now even advanced surgeries like spine surgery gynecological surgery plastic surgery everything is conducted there visiting surgeons and super specialists come from all parts of india but then we also realized that not everybody reaches hospital so we called again people health assembly and ask them what are your priority health problem on which you would like search our organization to work usually when we want to conduct research we look into journals as to what is the currently going on which field should i do research on we ask them what do you want us to work upon and those 230 40 people representing 50 villages through a process of voting they identified five priorities health priorities as their most important priorities very naturally one was malaria you will be surprised that 50% cases of falciparum malaria in maharashtra come from one single gadchuli district which only has 1% population of maharashtra malaria was still prevalent there but surprisingly their other priorities were low back ache never heard that as a research priority in public health alcoholism amongst men and women said that the alcohol drinking by men and for women the biggest problem was white vaginal discharge brother these things were never talked about as health priorities in public health we had had our recent training in the us even there all talk about public health was at that time was hiv family planning reducing birth rate and here people of gadchuli were telling us very different priorities they of course said one priority our children die can you do something about this and these five problems that they provided us have provided a lifetime agenda for research for search and for us also just one glimpse one example of the various problems that they gave us that these are our health needs and by the way some of their health needs that they talked about low back ache alcoholism now the global burden of disease 30 years later have discovered these as the highest priority morbidities or risk factors in the world alcohol comes as one of the top 7 risk factors causing death disease and disability world over low back ache is second commonest morbidity world over it took public health experts to learn 30 years which people of gadchuli gave us 30 years ago they said our children die and yes we had experienced it one rainy evening when i was sitting in the hospital and just completed and came back home two women knocked on my door and they rushed inside 
with one very shriveled tiny neonate in their arm i took the baby on my bed because there is no examination table at my home and before i could do anything i put my stetho and there were bubbling sounds in the chest baby was very shriveled and malnourished so i i was sort of self talk severe malnutrition dehydration pneumonia and baby stopped breathing it was a helpless moment couldn't do anything and when i asked that mother and grandmother the story as to why didn't you come little earlier the story really was that there were 18 causes why that child died husband was alcoholic mother was illiterate poor no ANC check up when the baby was born no breastfeeding for the first 3 days when she tried breastfeeding it failed so she gave bottle feeding diarrhea went to a magic healer so on and so forth and finally when the baby became very sick and they started walking towards our hospital it was a rainy season a river, the river was full so they couldn't cross the river from morning till evening they were sitting on the other bank of the river they were looking at the baby who was worsening every moment and they were also looking at a bridge which was incompletely constructed because of corruption that bridge center pillar had collapsed the bridge was never constructed so the baby could not reach hospital in time 18 causes against one baby it's very unequal battle it was a depressing moment in my life if this tiny neonate dies because of 18 causes which include poverty and illiteracy and corruption what can we do and then it suddenly clicked me that you don't have to solve 18 problems to save this baby even if one one link in this chain can be broken if that mother was not illiterate if she had breastfed the baby if there was bridge on the river probably this baby wouldn't have died and so the five lakh neonates that die every year in india they die because of this kind of multiple causes they don't reach hospitals and if they reach hospitals that is another tragedy you might have read news about large scale neonatal deaths in gorakhpur in nashik in purulia if every delivery starts occurring in the hospital hospitals are overcrowded neonatal units are overcrowded some pediatrician some doctor is blamed as a scapegoat but real reason is overcrowding of hospitals so either neonate don't neonates don't reach hospitals sick children don't reach hospital and if they reach hospitals cannot cope up with that kind of workload and so we designed a new model not hospital based neonatal care but home based neonatal care if babies cannot reach hospital hospital must reach where the babies are and babies were at home and this is 1995 80% of deliveries in india were occurring at home and the babies were born care for and they, they either survived or they died at home so we took neonatal care to home and the model that we developed ordinary semi literate woman to be trained to become a village level neonatologist when we trained the first batch we were little hesitant are we doing a blunder are we taking too much of a risk who was saying that sick neonate is a very very serious crisis very critical situation don't touch immediately send to hospital but where were the hospitals gadchuli district is 300 kilometers long and there was only one district hospital where there was a pediatrician and babies couldn't cross the river babies couldn't the bridges were broken so this home based newborn care model was designed when the first batch was trained we invited 10 topmost pediatricians of india you know some of the name dr mehrwan singh whose textbook of neonatology you might be using dr vinod paul who today is health advisor of the niti aayog such 10 pediatricians 
they evaluated our home based newborn care protocol and assessed 39 community health workers whom we had trained as village neonatologists and at the end dr mehrwan singh as the chairman of the committee said these trained village health worker of search in gadchiroli they know about newborn care more than the mbbs graduates of all india institute of medical sciences that only shows that a ordinary woman in the village can also be trained and empowered there is nothing very magical about us we are very lucky that we got admission in medical college but we shouldn't really develop any misunderstanding that other people are inferior the lakhs and crores of women in india's villages they also can be trained they too have the same human potential the question is really giving them knowledge giving them empowerment giving them opportunity this simple home based newborn care model that we developed we conducted a rigorous field trial of it 40 39 villages intervention 44 control villages and that showed that within 3 year neonatal mortality was decreased by 70% now the problem that one baby the problem was also given by tribal health assembly that our children die can you do something the problem was also given by national and global data that the nearly 70% of the infant mortality was occurring in the newborn period so everything was really converging that neonates need needed to be saved and this approach for the first time it is said that it showed for the first time that neonates in developing countries and rural area and inaccessible areas can be provide simplified model of primary neonatal care and it is very effective that the lancet published this study in 1999 and it attracted global attention but something happened subsequently the lancet its editors and historian of lancet selected what they called the vintage papers ever published in the lancet in the history of 180 years of lancet what were the milestone papers and a volume was published vintage papers in the lancet and if you open that volume it starts with louis pasteur's paper robert cox's paper ronald ross paper Benting and Best discovery of insulin, Alexander Fleming discovery of penicillin, and when you flip the pages and come into 90s, there is one paper from this obscure place called Gadchiroli, home-based newborn care in Gadchiroli. <laughs> If you go to the places where the problems are. if you listen to the people to know the problems and they develop simplified solution they can solve some of the national and global problem and so my friends today when you go out with your degree i'll urge you that there are places in this country where nobody reaches probably traders reach there to exploit but no doctor reaches you may not know but in 11 crore tribal people live in india largely scattered in 809 blocks in 150 districts which are tribal majority blocks healthcare hardly exists there who would go there until some medical person goes there as a pioneer with the light of medical knowledge and empowerment in the hand neonates will continue to die because the bridge of healthcare is broken and so as you will come out of this institution today tomorrow today large number when i was i was really amazed that what large number of doctors this great institute trains 
nearly 200 medical graduates and including your new campus. Nearly 200 MDs and MS, 50 DMs and MCH, where will you go? I'll urge you, don't stand with the application of job. Don't stand in a queue somewhere. Go to the places where problems are and not to the places where facilities are. Usually when we seek our future, we look for facilities. The places with facilities don't need you. There you become a problem. You are not needed there. There are 100 other candidates waiting in the queue. And you stand in, at the end of the queue. The simple trick is just turn around. Turn your direction by 180 degrees and you become the first in the queue. It's easy to become a pioneer. Trick is, instead of standing in the end of the queue, change your direction by 180 degrees and then become first. Go where the problems are because you are needed there and because nobody else goes, you are the sole person going there. That's how Ronald Ross, he didn't stay in Britain. He came to India and worked on malaria and in working in Sikandarabad, he discovered that mosquitoes transmit malaria. Robert Koch, from Europe, he came in the search of cholera epidemic. First, he came to Egypt, but by that time, Egypt cholera epidemic was over, so he came by ship to India and he discovered Vibrio cholerae. All these path-breaking scientists went where the problems were. We usually prefer the places where there are all facilities, ICUs and kidney transplant and dialysis and ACs and computers and yes, but you are not needed there. And the places which need you remain vacant. Today I appeal to you that you have only one life. No once more to this life. It is too precious a life. Don't waste it after making money. Money is too, too cheap a thing. Write on that blank check of your life what is the purpose of your life. And the purpose is waiting out there in Gadchiroli. In Gadchirolis of India, there are hundreds of such places where doctors are needed, where health workers are needed, where solutions are needed. Become the solution maker. We all know historic history that Newton sat under that apple tree and he saw that apple falling and we know that he discovered the principle of gravity. What a Shattering discovery which near 300 years later also we keep on learning. One of the fundamental principles of understanding the world, principle of gravity. But what would have happened if, if Newton would have sat in his drawing room and not gone outside? Even today, my friends, young friends, apples are falling every day. Children are dying in villages. Malaria is rampant and COVID, of course, I don't have to tell you. It knocked on your doors also. But health problems are happening. People are suffering. These are the apples which are falling every day. You have to go there to witness it, observe it, listen to the people, develop a solution and you become a pioneer. And so, The degree that you held today, when Dr. Katoj gave you degree, the medals and prizes that we gave you today, these are honors. You deserve congratulations. But this is responsibility as well. And when I was putting those medals in your neck, I was just thinking, my boy or my girl, what are you going to do with this medal? 
you are an exceptional individual but apply your exceptionality to the exceptional problems and situations and so i would expect from you i would urge you that make much better use of your life by devoting it to a purpose to a cause a cause which nobody else other want, other people don't want to serve so you are needed there about 15 years ago we started a, a program for youth called nirman to help youth identify purpose of their life and about one third of the students have gone through nirman nearly 1500 have gone through 500 have been young doctors and many of them after going through that program for themselves they have discovered they have decided their purpose of life and nearly 150 have been have been working in different parts of india from maharashtra to chatisgarh to jharkhand to orissa to assam young doctors who have gone through nirman have spread themselves to go witness the problem and solve the problem so today i invite all of you nirman search gadchiroli are merely examples but there are several such nirmans there are several such gadchirolis there are million villages and hamlets in india which await you today i congratulate you i give you best wishes for your life and the path that you will choose will enlighten your life my blessings thank you very much <laughs>